um, I don't have a big fan base yet. So it's like a lot of people ask you, why are you even dropping an EP? Who's going to listen? It's so not so easy to put together an EP. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we not apologizing to? You said no apologies. Yes, no apologies. Um, hmm, it's very deep. I don't, want to, I don't know if I want to dive on the deep end yet. Welcome to the No Apologies podcast. My name is Helen Apia Ampofo, aka Flavor Flav's wife. And today we're entering a musician's mind as we break down the No Apologies EP with Vienna Nagasi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so good to have you in my home. It's so good to be in your home. The beverages yeah. have been flowing. They have to. Yeah, they it's, have it's to. been a lubricating uh, adventure so far. Well, interesting word. But <laughs> let's move from it. Who are we not apologizing to? You said no apologies. Yes, no apologies. Um, hmm, it's very deep. I don't, want to, I don't know if I want to dive on the deep end yet. But generally speaking, um, this project came from a very very reflective space um mm. just about my growth haven't been in the industry for a while and I've, so i've been privileged or i've had the misfortune of seeing both sides i think i think it's a fortune really like yeah. seeing both sides of the industry the good and the bad so i've made an informed decision in wanting to be an artist you know most people come in thinking it's glam even i'm sure what you do people yeah. think it's easy but they don't know the amount of times that we don't sleep you know, the amount of research you have to do before you go on TV. Even sometimes glam, the process of getting glam is very stressful. Like, I don't, now, currently, I don't enjoy getting makeup done. No? Yeah, because it's long. Like, you're going to sit I in mean, a chair for, like... I mean, the end result is lit. Yeah, but, like, you sit in a chair for, like, True. one to two hours sometimes. But just, basically, this project embodies where I'm at in my life right now. And you're not apologizing. I'm not apologizing for owning myself now. Yeah. But, I mean, typically, do you apologize? To put, to put it summarily, oh, I do if I'm wrong, I'll apologize. Yeah? yeah I'm not you're not one of those ones. <laughs> not one of those ones. Do you no, apologize no. directly, or is it like, I made you, I made y'all off here? No, no, I'll apologize. You, you'll apologize. Like, yeah, before, I was that girl before, and now I realize oh, I'm so immature, and slightly, like, tacky. Yeah, and yeah. I agree. It's good to yeah, apologize. Be to direct. Apologize. If I I'm did late, XYZ. I apologize. Okay. If I didn't do something I said I was going to do, I apologize. If I offend somebody, they tell me I apologize. So, yeah, I think it's, it's beautiful when you mature and then you, you realize you're letting go of a lot of toxic habits from before. It's giving so. growth. It's giving revolution. Revolution. <laughs> or and evolution, rather. Evolution. Yeah. Well, why are you allowing us to deep dive into your brain as far as this EP is concerned? Typically, the EPs are released. We might get a bit of convo on mm. launch night, but you want us to, to go behind the lyrics, the beats, mm. and, you know, get into your brain almost. Yeah, so the reason why this podcast exists or it is is because one is a safe space um you know when you go for interviews at least for me my experience now having done it a few times you go with your guard up yeah yes like you go because like you don't want to say the wrong thing to offend somebody because it can be clickbait material like i don't know if it's just me but mm. like you go with your guard up and it's hard to let the guard down yeah so i'm literally in my home it doesn't get safer than this and I'm talking to somebody that I didn't just meet, like mm. coming for an interview. Like I know you, not it's not deep, but like I know you. And I think that for me, like you understand and you're, I have spoken to you a few times and I think you're deep. So I'll feel, allegedly. I'll feel, <laughs> yeah, allegedly. But I feel safe just being deep, like doing the deep stuff. Yeah. I feel like vulnerable, being open and raw, mm. which is why this podcast is happening and with you. So thank you. I think you. that's epic. I think that's <laughs> epic. Getting a chance to go beyond the lyrics, the beats, yeah. and, you know, thinking about the inspiration. I know you get that a lot. Yes. Every time you go for interviews, <laughs> what was the inspiration yes, behind? Inspiration. And it's all very deep. And sometimes I'm probably thinking, like, if you ask me the inspiration be behind half the things I do, is I just because I felt like it. Really? Sometimes it's not that deep. Yeah, Sometimes yeah, yeah. you want to have yeah. fun. You just want to express yourself. You're not mm -hmm. thinking about anything in particular. But yeah. I know on this EP, all the songs are coming from a, a specific a place. Specific <laughs> place. But the EP kicks off with the song Free Mind. Free Mind. It's a beautiful melody. Mm -hmm. Talk us through that. But even before that, how yeah. does one get prepared for the making of an EP? So, for example, a boxer will get into the ring with or, you know, practice their, their jabs and whatever else mm -hmm. with their favorite rap music, maybe. Yeah. That's how I pump myself up for morning radio. Oh, you do Straight rap? Straight rap. Wow. No chaser. Who's your guy? 
Um, a lot of oh, UK, girl. a lot of UK um, uh, grime. So like grime drill. <laughs> a lot of UK grime and drill. Okay. A lot of Bugsy Malone, Dave, okay. Fredo, the hot stuff. Storms. Storms. My guy. He's my guy. <laughs> He's my guy. Okay. Our guy. <laughs> He's our guy. A lot of a lot of you know pumped up music to get yeah. you through the day. Oh, that's good. Um, but I've had your EP on loop. Honestly, it's also yeah. the type of music um, that I would have on repeat. So like I said, free mind starts off the journey talk to us about it and how do you even get prepared for an ep okay so this is my first ep by the way and how we even arrived at the decision to release an ep is because we felt like we had a message mm. i'm the type of artist that at least i find i don't want to do things just because it's supposed to be done this way or that's part of why that's the ep title no apologies in the first place if there's a model for what an artist is supposed to be or a Ghanaian artist i'm going to break it because i'm not i'm not going to fit into someone's blueprint of what i'm supposed to do in my life mm. generally so this is no apologies so we wanted to do it um i don't have a big fan base yet so it's like a lot of people ask you why are you even dropping an ep who's going to listen Mm. But for me, I have a message and I want to put it out. So the creative process was very draining because we didn't have a lot of time. We wanted to release it even in July and we missed that window. Okay. And then we happened to do it in August. A lot of things went left during, this, <laughs> during the process of it, I'll be honest. It's so not easy thing. to put together an EP. It's not. Huh? It's not. Because you have to make sure you're curating the right sort of like, at least for me, I'm a perfectionist to an extent. Mm. So I want to work with the right sign? people. I'm Aries. <gasps> no way. I'm you? Aries as well. Definitely not a perfectionist. You're not? No, if it's good, if it's, if it's go time, it's go time. It's my time. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good... So I'm learning to become more like that okay. with time. But, but with my sound, I find I'm very particular about what, it, what I wanted to sound because I didn't have the luxury of doing that before. Okay. The people I was working with, I didn't have the luxury of like... I didn't feel like I was doing things my way. Mm. I felt like I had to do things according to someone else's expectations. And now that I have the luxury of working myself with my team few more less pressure but it also on the other end of things is pressure because like now you have to satisfy your own idea of what is in your head mm. i don't know if i'm taking it like, it has to make sense it's in your it brain but sense. when it gets out of your brain yes there's marketability you know you have to sell the music because uh you know if you don't work you don't eat yes and this is how we're supposed to make a living so the process was very arduous and it took me through a mental space I've never been in my life. No way. So now let me let me talk about free mind. I wrote free mind because I feel like a lot of us are struggling, mm. right? And we don't always feel like we have the platform to talk about, especially being in the creative space. I know a lot of creatives that are going through it mentally. Like a lot of my friends are depressed. A lot of my friends are anxious. They, and they don't know what that feels like. It's also because, like I said, there's this stereotype of what you should be. If you're... If you're a TV presenter, you, you shouldn't have a down day. You shouldn't have a down moment. It's, mm. a, it's just all these things that are perpetuated by society that free mind for me was just me, a message to myself of, Vienna, you don't have to do things anyway, but the way that you think works for you. Mm. So I was outgrowing a lot of the dogmas that I have, you know, I've fed my mind. Just yeah, deep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, how do you typically free your mind? Um, mm. The pressures of this life, they're enormous. Yes. Um, I say it all the time. It got to our turn to become adults yeah. and the whole thing is upside down. It's messed up. It's messed up. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure to write music, to make music, you have to declutter. Yeah. Make space in your brain. How do you yes. do that? So solitude. Um, usually my alone time and I am I will read a lot of books like and I'll watch a lot of podcasts because sometimes what I'm struggling to put words to someone else is going mm. through so I watched the me and my mind documentary by Selena Gomez so you know she's bipolar yeah by diagnosis yeah. so just listen to her say well I'm not disclaimer I'm not saying I am <laughs> I'm just saying I mean that. And if you wear that be nothing yes wrong there's nothing that. wrong with it but I'm yeah. not saying that I am it's just when you see an artist of her magnitude admitting that she has bipolar disorder and you see how she goes through it like with her team and a bunch of things sometimes the words that are struggling to find to like speak what you're feeling someone else is giving you the words yeah mm. basically so i get i get empowerment from being alone and just listening to people that i think are 
like they embody what I, I think I want to embody. Mm. I don't know if I, I answered it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I follow, I follow. Yeah. Now, in Free Mind, you can hear the violin come through. Yes. It's definitely one of the instruments that enrich the music. Yes. Why did you decide to go on that path? So the violin is one of my favorite instruments, and I feel like it tugs on my soul every time I hear the violin. It's so soft, it's so giving gentle. Angelic. It's very angelic. Actually, that's the that's the perf that's the perfect word to describe like the violin. Mm. It's very soft, somber, pensive, and for the type of song that I knew Free Mind would be, I needed the instrument of the violin to be in this, no matter what was like a non-negotiable. Non what's the what's the feedback been like, um, yeah. as far as the song is concerned? My friend sent me something very, I'll try and attach the message she sent me, but like that was the most um, emotional, mess, emotive message that someone has given, like feedback someone has given me. Yeah. She said like, I think she's been going through it. Like all of us have. We are. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and she said when she, when she started to listen to the EP and then it starts with Free Mind, she was like, she started to cry. Because it felt like everything that she, like I was saying, everything that she's been struggling to put words to, I was talking about and with a spoken word at the end of it. And she just felt like, oh my goodness, I can relate. That's what I love about Freema. A lot of people can relate. And mm. I didn't intend, I was just telling my story. But the beautiful thing I find about vulnerability is like once you're open and raw, you find your tribe. Like the people yeah. that are going through the same thing as you, you find them and you guys can connect on a level that most people will not understand. Going, We're all going all through going it. Through it. Yeah. Um, I mean, did they specifically talk about the spoken word part of the of the of the song how did that come about is that your usual style no it's not i haven't done that before ah, the spirit came over you just <laughs> enveloped me but to be very honest this ep has been very um cathartic for me very therapeutic as well just mm. i've been learning sides of me that i never knew existed from doing it um spoken word i've never doubled in before but i knew that and i think almost how the song would be was given to me by god it was like, like a spiritual download. I just yes, mm. like basically everything. Just I just knew the format of the song like from the jump, yeah. And I've never done that before, so I I know it just wasn't my spirit that this was how I wanted to, it to be and sound. So yeah, I know. Shout out, friend, shout out to God. Shout out to God. <laughs> I know your friend cried listening to it. Did yes. did you cry making the song? I cry listening to it. It okay. makes me emotional every time because yeah. it's like oh wow you did this and like. For me, I think growing up, I struggled. I always felt like being vulnerable was a weakness, which is, which is the narrative that's been pushed around. It's really being African. Mm -hmm. A lot of, like, your parents don't want you to cry. Like, you hold everything in until yeah. you can't. And you, like, implode, rather. Yeah. So the fact that I had carried to let myself be vulnerable was just... And what's funny is I find on this side, I don't, get, I don't see a lot of artists doing that, which mm. is sad, to be honest. Um, everybody's, like... Um, it's this whole idea of branding. Yeah. So to brand yourself, for some reason, we think that you shouldn't be raw and real and honest about your struggles. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not finding a lot of artists over here that I can connect with on that level. Because mm. everybody's forming hard. Like, it's easy. It's not. Yeah. Let the people know that it's not easy so that when they're coming in, they know that it's not going to be an easy cruise, but they'll figure it out. Mm. So for me, I want to be the artist that when I'm going through it, I'll let people know. Because there's one person that will listen to my music that will love me because of that fact. So vulnerability yeah. is something I learned. And every, so that's why every time I listen to the song, I'm like, oh, girl, you found the courage to do this thing and be open and let people into your mind and your heart. It takes a lot of strength to yeah. admit that everything isn't, isn't going according to plan. But yeah. before we wrap up on, on Free Mind, because yes. there's a lot more yeah. to talk about, there's a line. You say you have to burn to, to shine. shine. Expand. You have to... Um, for something to be born, something has to die. So for rebirth to happen, it means that something is dying, like a part of you is dying. No, say one more time. I need to give you your click. <laughs> some, some, who got born? <laughs> for something to be reborn, something must have died. So in order for, for me to For something to be reborn, something must have something died. Something must have died. Facts. Yeah. yeah. And in order to shine, you have to burn. Like when you look at fire, it's basically, sometimes, you know people that are obsessed with fire, it's basically like, glaring at you but something is burning on the inside of the fire there's wood a bunch of things but what you're seeing as like bonfire having fun something is burning mm. 
And I think I've gone through my period of that. I have like, I, I just tried to fit into people's idea of what I should be. And I've tried to please people. Having been in the industry for a while, you have to do this. You have to show skin. If you don't show skin, you, you have to twerk on stage. Like, I'm just setting examples. If you see me twerking on stage, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, my team is going to be like, eh. it's so nice. <laughs> okay. That was it for me. Self expression. Yes. But on your terms. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Terms. Like, it's okay to twerk, have fun, but it's Basically, on your terms. Yeah, they, I, it was just this idea that if you don't do this, mm. you won't make it. That's the thing that I hated the most. But so I had to burn that, like, all of those, that the wiring that made me feel like if I didn't do things a certain way, or if I didn't kiss ass, or if I didn't do a certain thing that the industry requires you to, for some strange reason, the fans won't find you or the fans won't connect with you. And I think it's wrong. We have social media, lots of people are finding me. I don't know how, mm. but people keep DMing me, like, I'm listening to your projects. That's the beautiful thing about where we're at in life te technology and whatnot. So, yeah, I had to burn my wiring to shine into my new mindset yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's fire it's passion yes. things are dying things are being reborn yes. it's still no apologies yes. no apologies no apologies, no apologies. No apologies. <laughs> i know the truth you know graffiti night i found myself i found myself in the sound